Good morning, fellow ruminators. Welcome back to another session of Rumination with Andrew. Thank you so much for joining as we are about to discuss a very important topical matter. And this morning, we are going to look briefly at crime and violence again in Jamaica and the fact that the United States has issued another travel advisory uh, to its citizens about traveling to Jamaica. Now, this has been an ongoing matter. I am sure that crime and violence is a part of the mainstream diet of the Jamaican people and that they have become so accustomed to it that it seems to me that nobody is trying to do anything about it. Any measures, any pragmatic measures are being implemented to stem the um, levels of the high levels of crime and violence that we see in Jamaica, in modern Jamaica. It's time for us now to reflect and to, you know, begin to assess this monster because it is indeed a monster and it has been affecting our people for so many years. It seems, however, that the government is only concerned about when the United States issues travel advisories. It's not concerned about its citizens, the people who live there, and the fact that they have to deal with this on a day-to-day -day basis. It's they're only concerned about U.S. citizens being protected, um, as opposed to Jamaicans, Jamaican citizens being protected and feeling secure in their own country. So if that is not slavery to me, if that is not a grand plantation, you tell me what it is, because I don't know. And it's time for us to face up with these realities and demand that our governments be transparent with us. However, the United States of America in itself is not a protected land, right? I mean, it's a big country, and I'm sure that lots of its citizens feel protected, even though many of them are also living in another land. They're living in this grand delusional world in which they think the United States is protecting them and is desirous of, you know, keeping them safe when it is not. We know that recently the president of the United States, a former president, President Donald Trump, there was an attempted assassination on his life. Um, so it should tell us that the United States itself is not a safe country to be. That a 20-year-old young man could have, you know, climbed up on a building on top of an edifice and, you know, and attempted to have shot the president. Well, he actually shot the president, um, an attempt to have conducted an attempted assassination, that is beyond thinking. That is beyond, you know, a rational mind. But that is what is said, and we have to, you know, accept what they have, the report that they have made. But the Gleaner opened up this morning, uh, well, I think it was yesterday, a headline news from the Gleaner, and it said, suggested here that U.S. State Department reiterates level three travel advisory for Jamaica. And Jamaica's ambassador to the United States, Audrey Morris, has welcomed what she says is the softening of the language of the U.S. State Department in its latest travel advisory on the country, even as the island remains at level three. So let us see what the softening is. At level three, we designation means U.S. citizens should reconsider traveling to a country. So what has been softened? If it's level three, it means that the U.S. is advising its citizens that they should reconsider traveling to Jamaica. In the July 25 advisory, the U.S. State Department reiterated that Americans should reconsider travel to Jamaica due to crime. It continued to urge citizens to exercise increased caution regarding medical services, and that is also important. Now, this is what the United States, is, um, the United States State Department is saying, and I quote, violent crime occurs throughout Jamaica. Tourist areas generally see lower rates of violent crime than other parts of the country. The homicide rate reported by the government of Jamaica is among the highest in the Western Hemisphere. Armed robberies and sexual assaults are common. The U.S. Embassy routinely receives reports of sexual assaults, including from U.S. citizen tourists at resorts. Now, that is interesting that at resorts, you know, you have U.S. citizens being sexually assaulted. That's something is interesting. Now, assault also could, I know, I don't know what they mean by assaulted. Are they assaulted physically or is it verbal assault? We don't know. U.S. citizens report slow or unsatisfactory response to serious criminal incidents. When arrests are made, cases are infrequently prosecuted to a final verdict and sentence, read a section of the advisory. 
Now they continue here, I continue to quote from the US State Department. US citizens should not expect the same level of health. So it, it's talking now about the medical system in Jamaica. First, it addressed the whole matter of the crime situation. Now it's addressing the matter of health. That's the State Department's addressing the matter of health care in Jamaica. And I quote directly from the US State Department. U.S. citizens should not expect the same level of health care available in Jamaica as is available in the United States. This includes generally lower levels of emergency service response times or routine care for illness or injury. Private hospitals require payment upfront before admitting patients and may not have the ability to provide specialized care. Ambulance services are not always staffed with EMTs or always readily available, especially in rural areas. U.S. citizens should bring extra prescription medication as common medications such as insulin um, are not available. So this is what they're saying. Now, the U.S. is also not contextualizing the fact that it is the United States that is sending the guards through the um, Defense Department, the Pentagon, right, is sending all of these guns flowing the Caribbean with these armed weapons, right, these armed weaponries. The United States is responsible for doing that, right? Another thing is that the United States, through its IMF policies and the world, the policies of the World Bank, have foisted or foisted upon Jamaica in 2013 a very stringent and austere IMF um, deal, IMF loan, that prohibited Jamaica from developing its infrastructure, like its healthcare system. It had nothing, it had no breathing room for the Jamaican government to be able to develop the country and to invest in social, um, the its social infrastructure of Jamaica. And oftentimes the United States does not concern about that. They actually suffocated, they tightened Jamaica's throat, you know, suffocating the country. Um, because of this very stringent IMF agreement, which it did not have to be that austere, right? It did not have to be that austere. And even today, we don't know what is really happening, if the government is still in that sort of arrangement, because, you know, it's all about debt reduction and not about developing the economy, expanding the economy. We are actually contracting the economy and making the space for you know expansion of the medical care system and the ability to staff and also to buy these basic um you know medications and things impossible right and these are us policies that have been foisted up on jamaica it's not the jamaican government doesn't have a choice Right? The Jamaican government doesn't have a choice, but it cannot say what it needs to say because, you know, it is the one in the hot water and they have to behave diplomatically and not speak the truth. But I can speak the truth because I am not a diplomat and neither am I going to speak diplomatically because it's just aka lying and pretension, pretensive behavior, which I'm not going to support on this channel. So we understand that that is the case. It lets people do not understand the context of crime and violence in Jamaica. Not that the government is not doing anything. I think the government needs to upgrade its system and also need to modernize and need to learn how to also conduct and, you know, um, harness intelligence, which they are not doing. But we understand that the levels, the flow of guns that are heading to Jamaica cannot be curtailed only by the Jamaica government. So Ambassador Marx, as the ambassador, the Jamaican ambassador to the United States, Marx told the cleaner that although the advice remains at level three, the State Department has softened its language as it has put the country's healthcare system at a level two. It's not where we want to be, but it is an improvement. Also, we're now at level two, and that's the improvement. She said that discussions between the Jamaican government and the U.S. Department of State are ongoing. And these are the words of Marx, that's Audrey Marx, the Jamaican ambassador to the United States. We are making progress and crime continues to be the major concern, she said, noting that the State Department is looking at the overall Jamaican crime statistics in making its cause. Um, she says that Marx noted that whereas last year about five U.S. tourists were impacted by crime, so far this year none has been recorded. Now, so they're actually focusing on U.S. citizens and not also the citizens of Jamaica. 
we should be focusing on the citizens of Jamaica first, right? Because just like the United States is suggesting, Jamaicans first, America first, Jamaica first. That is what should be the agenda. If we have low crime rates in Jamaica, then it's you possibly, or more, more than likely, you will not have any criminal activities among tourists, right? When you have high crime rates in the country, then that's where the probability lies. The probability is higher to have and to experience more foreign, um, you know, to experience crime. Crime is going to impact definitely the, the, the tourist industry, right? So that is what we should be aiming to do, to reduce crime, to stem the levels of crime, the high levels of crime among the citizens, to reduce that in Jamaica, that Jamaicans can live in a safe and secure environment. And then we won't have to worry about, we won't have to be concerned about, you know, um, crimes experienced by, by tourists, right? Because the life of a tourist is not more important than the life of a Jamaican. The life of a tourist is not more important than the life of a Jamaican. It is a life. And the Jamaican government needs to understand that. But I'm sure that it has not understood that because all it's concerned about is money. And oftentimes the tourists is not the money that is generated from tourism is not going into the Jamaican economy that much. It's, it goes out. Right? That money goes out of Jamaica. So we are we are pretending still. And we need to move beyond now the, this tourism industry and to be able to now formulate local industries where we can employ our people and we can make our people productive citizens. There's just too much loitering in Jamaica of talented people. And when you have that amount of loitering, then you are going to have you know, uh, an increase, an uptick in crime and violence because young minds, if they're not, you know, employed, if they're not put to productive means, then they are going to employ them in areas that are not productive, such as crime and violence. And make no bones about it, crime and violence is an area in which many people are making a lot of money. It's an industry in Jamaica. And we have often said that there are people, young men, young men, who often rent guns and they are employed to go and kill people. So we have to be able to assess fully what is happening, and especially as it regards the crime and violence situation in Jamaica. This is an ongoing topic. It's going nowhere. Because we are not, again, attacking frontally, manfully, the problem. We're just reactionary. So every time the U.S. sends an advisory, then we begin to, wow, we shout and say, we need to do something about crime and violence. But when we talk about it, it's not about, it's, it's, it's just putting a, a, a Band-Aid on the wound, as opposed to looking at the root cause of the disease of this monstrous cancer that we have in in Jamaica that has been festering for so many years, right? When are we going to begin now to get our acts together as regards crime and violence? Because Jamaica and crime and violence are almost, I think they are now synony synonymous, right? When people think about Jamaica, the first thing they think about apart from Bob Marley is crime and violence, right? Crime, Marijuana, Bob Marley, the top three things that they think about when you think about Jamaica, right? We've got to really improve our image on the world stage and stop talking about this Jamaican brand because the Jamaican brand is really a, a, a murderous country. That is really brand Jamaica, a murderous country, right? And stop spreading this no problem because we have a lot of problems in Jamaica, right? There's no problem man needs to go, right? That rhetoric needs to go. We need to understand that we have a lot of problems and we need to fix our problems. We're not animals here, just loitering around without, without brains to think rationally, 
right? Animals just walk around and they don't think about solving their problems. They respond by instinct. And how the government is responding to crime and violence is like an animal responding as if that is what, you know, at the moment, at the spur of the moment, you respond. Because the U.S. is sending you a travel advisory. And the Audrey Marks, the, the Jamaican ambassador to the United States, she's suggesting that, yeah, the, it has improved. We have improved. We are not where we are. We ought to be. We are not where we ought to be. Absolutely. We are far from where we ought to be. Audrey, you should know better because our citizens are not protected. Our citizens do not feel secure in their homes, on their properties. And their lives are being snuffed out every day. Right? We need to get our acts together. Thank you so much for joining. I hope that you like and you'll share and you'll subscribe. Remember now that if you do not like the video, the video will not be shared. Also, leave a comment on the video to spur the algorithm, to push the algorithm to move the video along. If not, the video is not going to be shared. It is not, we're not living in a democratic society as you think we are living in. Information is no longer free. So the only way you are going to do it is by just putting your like and just also hitting the subscribe button so that the videos can be shared with as many people on the platform that truth can be shared and information can be, to some extent, shared and be free. Outside of that, you, the, the videos are not going to be sent, right? This is what the rule is on YouTube. It is not a democracy that we live in, and you've got to wake up and see that that is so. All the best to you. Take care. Bye.